All right, folks, so what we have here are a couple of different devices that could fall into the category of choke or ballon, or even ballon choke. And that's kind of the point of this video. Uh, I often will call these things ballon chokes so people understand what I'm talking about and what functions they provide. And people generally get pretty dang on salty about that and tell me that I'm wrong. But uh, let's talk about it a little bit. Regardless if you have a choke or if you have a ballon or you have a ballon choke, the goal of these is to balance currents between your transmission line and your antenna. And they do pretty much the exact same thing, whether it's a choke or whether it's a ballon, it is to balance those currents and attenuate common mode current. Uh, this is a store-bought product that was sold as a choke. Both of these are things that I've made. And uh, I would call this one a choke when I made it, and I would call this one a ballon when I made it. But the construction of these is extremely similar. We just have some coaxial cable wrapped a number of times around a ferrite toroid core. In this case, this is a T240 Mix 31. Uh, same with this one. And the job of these is to attenuate common mode current. Now, I've got videos testing all of these, so we're not going to go through and test them. But we are going to talk a little bit about the distinction between ballon and choke and ballon choke and what all that means. Now, whenever I refer to these things as a choke ballon or a ballon choke, the hand police, they come out in full force and full fury. And they're not very nice. And they say things like, you wrong, ape. You a big dummy. I'm not watching your videos anymore. You should learn the difference between these. And what they try to do is they try to ham shame me for using the correct language. So what I want to say now is hand police, pay attention. So we want to take a look at this excerpt from the ARRL Antenna Book, 25th edition, chapter 24.4. And before we take a look at this, what I want to say is the American Radio Relay League produces the best materials, the best books, the best instruction on learning about amateur radio. And I would encourage everybody to check out their library of documentation that they make available, in particular, the antenna book, which is fantastic. So what I'm saying is, is I'm using this expert excerpt. Uh, with attribution from the American Radio Relay League, and I'm thanking them for all that they do when they produce these materials. I'll have a link where you can pick up your copy of the antenna book below should you choose to do that. I really encourage the ham police to do it. Anyhow, what we have here is it says it is useful to begin with the terminology of this important topic. The term ballon applies to any device that transfers differential mode signals between a balanced system and an unbalanced system while maintaining symmetry or symmetrical, I should say, energy distribution at the terminals of the balanced system. <clears throat> and so this would be at the feed point of a dipole, for example. The term only applies to the function of energy transfer, not uh, how the device is constructed. It doesn't matter whether the balanced, unbalanced transition is made through transmission line structures, like stubs, flux-coupled transformers, or simply by blocking unbalanced current flow, which are how these current balance that I showed earlier work. A common mode choke, for example, can perform the ballon function by putting impedance in the path of common mode currents at the load terminals, such as an antenna feed point, and is therefore a ballon. So what that is saying is, is that your choke is a choke ballon if you put it at the antenna feed point, and calling it a choke ballon is perfectly acceptable. So here's a quick diagram or schematic of a current ballon or a current choke ballon, I should say, to keep things accurate. And what you can see on the left-hand side is we have a coaxial connection that's coming in. One end of this ballon is going into the center conductor of our coax. The other is connected to the shield or the ground. And then you have two coils of wire. Now you can do this by using twin line. You can use this by using uh, magnet wire or in the case of the ones I showed, coaxial cable. Those three lines depict some sort of iron core or ferrite core, so the windings are around that core. And then you can see the I current going both directions for differential mode current. It will attenuate any common mode current, and then it ends up on the right-hand side at the terminals of our balanced antenna. So I want to take a look at another excerpt from the antenna book, this time chapter 24.7. In the preceding sections, problems associated with the common mode currents on transmission lines were described. Common mode feed line currents have several causes, primarily physical asymmetry of the antenna. And so when we build a dipole, it's not perfectly symmetric because we are humans and we cut things and things are a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. Also, you may use antennas that are not entirely symmetric. In those cases, you should really be using an un-un, not a ballon. 
and you would put a choke ballon in front of your unun and then your unun to your unbalanced antenna. It says direct connection of unbalanced feed lines and balanced antennas and coupling between the feed line at the antenna due to placement or orientation of the feed line. In addition, noise is picked up by the feed line as common mode current and signals are radiated by current on the feed line. It can cause interference to appliances and other electronics if they are near the feed line. And, and what that's saying is, is that the orientation and placement of your feed line can be susceptible to common mode current based off of its placement with the regular antenna or other generating devices that may be nearby. <clears throat> Reading further, we see in order to reduce common mode feed line current, chokes that create a high impedance in the current's path are used. If the choke is placed at the junction of the coaxial feed line and load, such as the antenna, the choke becomes a choke ballon. A choke ballon. Pay attention, ham police. The next time you want to ham shame somebody, remember this video. Between the unbalanced feed line and the balanced load, such as the antenna, choke and choke balance come in a variety of forms, which we'll explore later in this section. See the earlier section, transmission line matching devices, for a discussion on the differences between chokes, balance, and impedance transformers. Again, if you really want to learn about this stuff, pick up this book and read the entire chapter. Heck, read the entire book. So what I want to talk about now is a lot of times we'll see a slicked up somebody or other on the internet saying, trust me, bro, you can just build yourself a quick and easy, dirty $5 dipole. Pick up one of these BNC to banana jack connectors, connect your coaxial cable and a couple of wires, and Bob's your uncle. When I see people do this, what I ask them, sometimes to my detriment, is how are you handling common mode currents? And what kind of choke ballon should I be using with this? And you should ask those questions too. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into it now, but I'm going to reference another article called An Analysis of the Ballon. What does a ballon do for you? What happens if you don't use one? Does a ballon really make a difference? Bruce Eggers, Eggers maybe, WA9NEW, did a really great job on this article, and it was in the 1980 April edition of QST. Go ahead and Google it and give it a read. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.